Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hi there. I thought I would do a critical thinking podcast. This is three simple habits to improve your critical thinking. I remember liking this article for its business sense. It is from Harvard Business Review. The title of the article is Three Simple Habits to Improve Your Critical Thinking by Helen Lee Boyges. Or Boyges. You can go real deep with critical thinking. I thought this angle, the wording in this would appeal more to a business sense and have a different angle than trying to go too philosophical and breaking down the deep uh, subjects that uh, go into critical thinking. So let's give this a shot. All right. I'll post the link in the description. And at the end, maybe I'll talk a little bit about it. Like I said, it's by Helen Lee Boyges of Boyges. A few years ago, a CEO assured me that his company was the market leader. Clients will not leave for competitors, he added. It costs too much for them to switch. End quotes. Within weeks, the manufacturing giant Procter & Gamble elected not to renew its contact, contract with the firm. The CEO was shocked, but he shouldn't have been. For more than 20 years, I've helped struggling organizations. Sometimes they reach out because they have been mismanaged. Sometimes they have not stayed in front of the changing technologies. In a few cases, members of the senior team were simply negligent. But in my experience, these organizational problems shared a root cause. A lack of critical thinking. Too many business leaders are simply not reasoning through pressuring, pressing issues. Taking the time to evaluate a topic from all sides. Leaders often jump to the first conclusion. Whatever the evidence, even worse, C-suite leaders will just choose the evidence that supports their prior beliefs. A lack of metacognition, or thinking about thinking, is also a major driver, making people simply overconfident. The good news is that critical thinking is a learned skill. To help people get better at it, I recently started the Nonprofit Reboot Foundation, based on my personal experience as well as some of the work of our researchers. I pulled together three simple things you can do to improve your critical thinking skills. One, question assumptions. Two, reason through logic. Three, diversify thought. Now you might be thinking, I do that already, and you probably do, but just not as deliberately and thoroughly as you could. Cultivating these three key habits of mind go a long way in helping you become better at increasingly desired skill in the job market. Question assumptions. When I work to turn around an organization, I'll typically start by questioning the firm's assumptions. Once I visited dozens of stores of a retail chain posing as a shopper. I soon discovered that the company had presumed that its customers had far more disposable income than they really had. This erroneous belief made the company overprice its clothing. They would have made millions more each year if they had sold lower priced shirts and pants. Of course, it's hard to question everything. Imagine going through your day asking yourself, is this guy really blue? What if the person next to me isn't my colleague, but a twin sister? How do I... Really know that the economy won't implode tomorrow. The first step in questioning assumptions then is figuring out when to question assumptions. Turns out, a questioning approach is particularly helpful when the stakes are high. So if you're in a discussion about long-term company strategy upon which years of effort and expense will be based, be sure to ask basic questions about your beliefs. How do you know that the business will increase? What does the research say about your expectations about the future of the market? Have you taken time to 
step into the figurative shoes of your customers as a secret shopper. Another way to question your assumptions is to consider alternatives. You might ask, what if our clients changed? What if our suppliers went out of business? These sorts of questions help you gain new and important perspectives to help hone your thinking. Reason through logic. Years ago, I took on the task of turning around the division of a large lingerie company. The growth of one of its major product lines had been declining for years. No one could figure out why. It turned out the company had made the reasoning mistake over generalization, drawing a sweeping conclusion based on limited or insufficient evidence. Namely, the company believed that all their international customers had similar preferences in lingerie, so it shipped the same styles of brasiers to every store across Europe. When my team started talking to staff and customers and consumers, we realized that customers in different countries reported very distinct tastes and preferences. British women, for example, tended to buy lacy bras in bright colors. Italian women preferred beige bras with no lace. And those in the United States led the world in sports bra purchases. For this lingerie company, improving their reasoning helped the firm dramatically improve its bottom line. The good news is that the formal practice of logic dates back at least 2,000 years to Aristotle. Over those two millennia, logic has demonstrated its merit by reaching sound conclusions. So at your organization, pay close attention to the chain of logic constructed by a particular argument. Ask yourself, is the argument supported at every point by evidence? Do all the pieces of evidence build on each other to produce a sound conclusion? Being aware of common fallacies can also allow you to think more logically. For instance, people often engage in what's known as post hoc thinking. In this fallacy, people believe that because event Y followed event X, event Y must have been caused by event X. So for instance, a manager may believe that their sales agents rack up more sales in the spring because they fired up by the motivational speeches offered at the annual sales conference in February. But until that assumption is tested, there's no way the manager can know if their belief is correct. Seek out diversity of thought and collaboration. For years, I was the only female partner on McKinsey's transformation team. And today, while I serve on more than a half dozen corporate boards, I'm typically the only, only Asian and the only woman in the room during meetings. By virtue of my background and life experiences, I tend to see things differently from the people around me. This has often played to my advantage, but I'm not immune to groupthink either. When I'm around people similar to me for whatever reason, age, politics, religion, I try to solicit different points of view. It makes me a better thinker. It's natural for people to group themselves together with people who think or act like them. This happens especially readily online, where it's so easy to find a specific cultural niche. Social media algorithms can narrow our perspectives further, serving up only news that fits our individual beliefs. This is a problem. If everyone in our social circles thinks as we do, we become more rigid in our thinking and less likely to change our beliefs on the basis of new information. In fact, the more people listen to people who share their views, research shows the more polarized their views become. And there's a link there. The wording is bold. Or it's a color. It's crucial to get outside your personal bubble. You can start small. If you work in accounting, make friends with people in the marketing. If you always go out to lunch with senior staff, go to a ball game with your junior colleagues. Training yourself this way will help you escape your usual thinking and gain richer insights. In team settings, give people the chance to give their opinions independently without the influence of the group. When I ask for advice, for instance, I typically withhold my own preferences and ask team members to email me their opinions in separate notes. This tactic helps prevent people from engaging in groupthink. 
While these simple tactics may sound easy or even obvious, they are rare in practice, particularly in the business world. And too many organizations don't take the time to engage in robust forms of reasoning. But the important work of critical thinking pays off. While luck plays a role, sometimes small, sometimes large, in a company's successes, the most important business victories are achieved through critical thinking, through thinking smart. I like this article for many reasons. It's a little different from the philosophy um, deep dives I do and on some of the things I've practiced and the pyramids of thinking, how to reason out fallacies. This was like a simple perspective from a woman, an Asian woman who has used these skills and has done some research and giving her perspective on these things. I believe it's really important, especially in this day and age. I'd probably do more in-depth ones, but I remember flagging this because it's kind of resonated in a, hey, every man person way, right? And going into the cognitive functions of the brain, the parts that take in information, getting into deep dives on what is cognitive distortions and what are cognitive, but and getting into all that um, stuff. This was a great article, just a couple of habits, uh, three habits to pick up on and think about, you think about it from a business point of view, and you can think about it from many different angles because the skill is a really important one. And the three points that this article made were question assumptions, reason through logic, diversify thought. And I think that everybody should, you know, think about it a little. Think about thinking. Think about your assumptions. How do you follow logic? And when you spot it, eventually you start slapping yourself in the forehead. In 2017, when I had my Facebook war, 2018, I would copy things and paste them in notepads, even my own stuff. I talk about being embarrassed on Twitter a couple of times. There's a humble feeling. There's a change in one's perspectives and understanding when you realize that you are doing the same mistakes everyone else is. So here's to critical thinking. Breathing and meditation, self-awareness, self-analyzing, analyze your thoughts. And I wish everybody the best. I might even put this in the mental health or the foundations for wellness playlist. Leave any feedback. Hope to hear from you. Be good. Take care.